right. Well, thank you, Ms. Spearman, for taking thank a few you. minutes. Uh, you mentioned in your remarks just now uh, your support for Donald Trump. What do you think specifically he'll do for education and how he'll help our public schools in your state? Well, the main idea that I uh, support that Mr. Trump has said is that education is handled better at the local level, at the state level, and in local school districts across the country. Uh, I'm a firm believer of that, and so uh, I look forward to having more flexibility, uh, more support from the president uh, to, for that idea that, that education is handled best at the local level. Now, you and your department, you have to deal with the uh, U.S. Department of Education we quite do. a bit. We uh, do. So, uh, you know, Mr. Trump has said that he's interested in either uh, slowing down the department significantly or uh, getting rid of it altogether. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Well, uh, well, I think there's definitely a role that U.S. Department of Education has to play in protecting civil rights and uh, special education rights, um, and I've worked very closely with the folks who are there, some very good people who work at the U.S. Department of Education, and, and we've had a good relationship working. So uh, I think there's a balance, and uh, we can certainly work very well with the folks who are at the department. Uh, you know, and speaking of the department, uh, if, if you could have a sit down with John King or, mm -hmm. or whoever the next mm -hmm. sec Secretary of Education is, uh, what would you ask for in terms of relief or just anything that you would want from the feds? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I hope to speak with him very soon. I've met Mr. King and he is a former state superintendent himself, so he understands that as well. But again, the flexibility for us to be able to do what we need to do in South Carolina to raise student achievement, to make sure that all of our students are prepared for college and career. It's not necessarily things that you can put in law. Uh, it's not necessarily things that you can describe. As we gather now writing our ESA uh, um, package and our new accountability system, we're finding that there are uh, ideas that we would like to try that may not be available in the regulations that they've sent out. So I would say to him or to whomever serves as the next Secretary of Education, give states the opportunity to have flexibility, to be innovative, to try new things that they think will work uh, to make students better prepare. Uh, this is your plan for the Every Student Succeeds Act, your accountability plan? That's right, plan that's right. How are you going to handle it? That's right. Uh, there's some uh, innovation that we would like to try in assessments. Uh, we may not be one of the five or seven states that's selected for that, but we still should have the opportunity to do those kinds of things. So I'm going to be asking for more flexibility. Now, one of the things that has come up in the Republican Party platform, for example, something the Education Department did recently, uh, the transgender guidance that the Obama right. administration right. put out. Uh, what do you think of that? Is that really an issue for the federal government? Would you want your own schools in South Carolina to handle it? Yes, uh, and we actually had legislation that was introduced and, and the governor and I worked together to ask that senator to hold off on the legislation to allow our own principals uh, and communities to work with the families to handle it on a case-by-case -case basis, which they have been doing for years. Uh, so again, I think the flexibility there and the concern, we know best at the local level how to work with families and students to, number one, make sure everyone's safe and secure, but to protect those individual rights. Now, uh, some educators around the country, including maybe some in your state, have express concerns about Donald Trump's rhetoric, the way he speaks about some groups, yeah. uh, you know, and the impact that may be having on students and their right. attitudes in schools. Right. What, what do you say to those folks, including maybe some in your state who well, have those concerns? Well, you know, if, if I had a chance to speak to Mr. Trump personally, I would ask him uh, to really consider. Now all, all eyes are on him, including the eyes of our children. And I would ask him to consider to, to tone his rhetoric down a bit. Uh, I, I too am concerned about that. But again, I think uh, folks that I know who have met him, uh, who believe that there's a better man there uh, and that he does understand. So I, I would ask him to tone it down and uh, that he is a role model now for all children in the United States and around the world. So that would be one thing that I would like to have an opportunity to do. Mr. Trump has also said that uh, 
Common Core is a disaster and, mm -hmm. and he wants to get rid of it now. You, you've taken a different approach in yeah. your state. Uh, why would you say to Mr. Trump or someone else that your approach uh, to the Common Core and what you did is the right, right approach? Well, I think, I think what we did is the right approach. We, we had Common Core standards, but we decided to bring our teachers back in, educators, higher education folks, parents, to review the standards. We rewrote them. Uh, you know, the truth is there's some standards that are very similar. Uh, you're going to have to learn to multiply. You're going to have to learn uh, uh, science, uh, English language arts. There's certain standards that are going to be very, very similar. But we added to Common Core standards. Uh, we we rewrote them. We we made them more rigorous. We organized them better for parents to understand. So I would say to anyone in the country that they really, if they've adopted those standards, they need to go back and look at them and and give their teachers a chance to improve.